considerable defensive wall. It's Ian Hart. This is LS11. Well, good morning. Welcome along to LS11. It is, of course, your weekly one-stop shop for everything. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. My name's Darren. And uh, joining us, of course, is our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives. And it's, of course, Ryan Wilson. Hello, Ryan. How are you doing? Yeah, good morning, chaps. Lovely to see you both. Uh, lovely to see you. And uh, yes, our super sub is back, ladies and gentlemen, because Ben's off highfalutin at Port Vale. <laughs> This is, of course, Jerry McNamee. How are you doing, Jerry? Not bad. Post St. Patrick, I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's Ben. Uh, you're going to lose this international spot if you're not careful. I've been called up again. Yeah. <laughs> Coming into a very important time of the year. Oh, no, we're not in the Euros, are we? So, yeah, I'll leave that analogy alone. But, yeah, <laughs> good to see. Hey, we won the rugby. We're the Six Nations champions. What more do you want? You know, hmm. we're, um, well, well, we're losing. Like, losing, grand losing. Slam would have been nice. A grand slam, grand would, have slam been would have been nice. But, you see, we take it seriously. Even the Irish Prime Minister resigned yesterday because of that defeat against England. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's... Uh, He's leaving. Although I've I've heard I've heard he's been seen with Kate Middleton. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, <laughs> that's in a whole other podcast we might do one day. Yeah, on uh, LS11 conspiracy theories coming out soon into your Patreon feeds. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, it could be fun. Did you have a good St Patrick's Day? Uh, you, obviously, you, you you celebrate it. You were you were down watching your your son. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Because as I, I said a lot of times before, because of Sky. I missed. I couldn't go to Elland Road because they were already booked to see Niall, my son, play a gig in London, and um, he, uh, yeah, it was good, sold out, and I even got to sing on stage. Yeah. Oh my was, God! Uh, what what did you sing? We sang N Seventeen by the Saw Doctors. Me and his brother and him, and um, I was dressed as Santa, and he was dressed as St Patrick, as you do, because it's the whole Santa St Patrick's. Access. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of drink taken. A lot of drink taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've gone off on a tangent, haven't we? Well, oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> R- R- did you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Um, I had a couple of Guinnesses, yeah. Um nice. celebrate with uh, my Irish friends. But I do I do love a Guinness actually. Um I got one of them um uh, not n- nos- nostra surge things. Have you seen it, Jerry? It's like a little device you put on the top of uh uh, a Guinness can, and it oh, kind yeah, of, yeah, I've heard of that, yeah. sort of like pause it. Meant to, and, and I must admit, although you've got to get the special cans, yeah. not but if you got the ones with the widget in, it kind of counteracts it, and then it pauses it flat. It's weird. So you have got yeah. to get the the special version of the Guinness. And I must admit, it's the best pint of Guinness that you'll have <laughs> at home. That is, you can't yeah. you can't beat a pint of Guinness poured properly. Certainly in Ireland, it. Yeah. Whether it, I don't I don't know whether it's. um a placebo or, or probably because the Irish really take it seriously. It's, it's right an art. Store. It's an art. It, it, yeah. it really is. Yeah. Like I was somewhere recently and uh, I had a, uh, had a 
pint of Guinness poured for me and they poured it literally just like a pint of lager and didn't yeah. do the waiting and whatnot. No, and, that, that's, and, it, that's and, it, a, and it and it were pretty shit. <laughs> that's against the law in Ireland, yeah. I mean, yeah. I usually get a surge after I've had Guinness, but that's that's again, that's another podcast. Mm. But uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's a way that you have to if you take your first sip in a proper Guinness glass, you have to get the first sip has to last, I think, until the top of the logo on the glass, and then mm. you have to have a mustache, and then there's all sorts of things, but uh, yeah. after 10, you don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> First one, you're very technical. 10, you're my best pal. Do you want to fight? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Well, you're going to be ahead to hear more of that on the new LS11 uh, Drinky Poos podcast. Uh, that's coming up very shortly. Uh, check out that in your feeds. Check out that in your feeds. Uh, and, uh, well, first of all, let's say a big thank you to our illustrious sponsors, main sponsors of LS11. It is, of course, Tough, Tough Shop. Shop is the place to go for all your logo embroidery needs. All the work done from the headquarters in Woodlesford, LS26. No logo setup fee on orders over £75. Check out the website for a showcase of some of our work, toughshop.co.uk. Well, let's get cracking then, shall we? Of course, if we are live streaming on uh, Twitter, whatever it's called this week, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook. Um, so if you've got a comment, then uh, send us through them and uh, we'll get through to them a little bit later on. Uh, well, let's kick off with, of course, uh, Millwall. And, uh, well, uh, oh. It's another win. No, another win. Uh, right, no, no real surprises in the lineup though. He's got he's got a team now. He's got a team. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he certainly has. And you know we've got some decent backup players, if that's what you want to call it. But it does seem that um, actually Grace seems to have cemented that right back spot. Even though we've got Connor Roberts in in January and uh, Kamara and Grew for doing a brilliant job in the middle of the park. I think it'll really the question more questions will be asked is when Pascal strikes back in the team. Uh, or back fit, should I say, because, you know, would Gruev drop out potentially for Ampadu to move forward? But Ampadu rode on as a centre defensive partnership. It's unbelievable. They've, they've, they've what, conceded one or two goals or whatever in a non in open play. So it's, um, <laughs> what, you don't really change a, a winning formula, do you, really? But yeah, team wasn't too, too surprising, really. Um, and I, it was a weird one, really, because Millwall, didn't necessarily just totally sit back per se. They were trying to have, have a bit of a pop, but I was saying to some friends afterwards, Millwall, just Millwall, doesn't matter what crop of players they have, doesn't manager what matter what manager they have. They just love kicking teams and just being gits. And it were a little bit scrappy in that respect, you know, a um, bit dirty and stuff. Their, their player Cooper should have been sent off about seven times. Um you know, I think on the last podcast after the Sheffield Wednesday game, I called out the referee, um, quite rightly so, for having a good game. You know, credit where credit's due. But I thought the referee for the Millwall game, he were horrendous. Um, he absolutely bottled it. Whitley should have had a penalty. Road on getting need in face and then Cooper by that Cooper. And then that Cooper sort of handballs it as he clears it. Um, great goal by Nonto. Um, Leeds, were the, Leeds were the better team, to be fair. Um Millwall didn't really lay a glove on us per, per se, but a uh, great goal by Nonto. Went 1 0 in at half time, but I, I, but I felt quite angry because I thought they should be down to 10 men and I just, we're 1 0 up, but I were angry at half time. It, it, it were a weird, weird one, Jerry. Yeah, it was. Uh, teams are turning up at Leeds and think this could be a tricky one. This could be a tricky one every game. And I think. Yeah, we usually play ourselves into a game and win. And you think at the time, oh, you're nervous at the time because at 1 0, you're nervous. But when you look back in the game, you think we were always in control. But yeah, Millwall were, they were a pub team uh, when the, you know, as you say, kicking and Cooper, he, he you know, he manhandled, was it him that manhandled Willie when he was on the ground and then the, the knee in for the penalty? And then there was a, uh, a punch in the face to Rooter as he was running mm -hmm. through. It was the referee, Steve Martin, who, I think, like his namesake actor, was the jerk because you know he he just was he was he missed everything and the linesman. Um, he was the guy that sent off Road on a hull as well, apparently. So he was yeah he, he was awful and that could have cost us and that would have been a real talking point. But now it's just an annoyance. But but yeah, the team as you say picks itself. I know Pascal. I I get the feeling Pascal's out for the season. To talking about surgery and and everything else. And no disrespect to Pascal, but. He, he was playing well. That was good. 
we, we, we haven't missed him. And Ampadu and Rodan is it's just one of the best partnerships I've seen at Leeds. You know, three good three goals, skull conceded from corners, no outfield goals. It's it's a hell of a record. But we that first half, we 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 should we had we played our way into the game. And uh Willie, when he cuts inside and hits that, he he scored that goal about three or four times this year. And it, there was no stopping that. And once we got our noses in front, it was just about controlling the game. And uh I know um <clears throat> As you say, it was a Millwall team and a Millwall manager. I mean, Neil Harris, the annoying hamster. I think he's. I think he said good stuff about Leeds. I couldn't tell because his cheeks were full of nuts. But he, um, he's, uh, he's, he said, yeah, Leeds are the best team. <laughs> Should be in the Premier League. Uh, that they had their moments. The, the, they sort of had had a lot of possession, which was a bit nerve wracking. I was watching their striker Obafemi because he's, he's Irish and thinking, don't score today, but just at least play well. But uh, yeah, the Cooper should have been off. Um, and the team itself, you look at it and you think it picks itself. But Dan James should be in the team. But then Willie should be in the team. And, you know, who, who Connor Roberts would, would be in the team. But, you know, and they all seem okay about that. You know, Patrick's got the number nine shirt. And Shapiro will be in there. And it's, we, we you look at our, our bench. Most, most teams must look at our bench and think, Jesus, wish we had some of them players in our team, never mind our bench. So, so job done. Uh, top of the uh, as was St Patrick's Day, top of the morning, top of the league. Uh, the Leicester lot down here are bricking it, they really are. I mean, we're only on top by virtue of a goal and an extra game played, but it's momentum, psyche. If we it's such a Leeds thing to do to lose a 17 point lead, but not Leeds doing it. But uh, with eight games to go, we know that it's Leeds, so you know, anything mad can happen, but at the moment, it feels good. Yeah, you can't put the bunting out just yet, I don't think. No, um, I don't think but, right, um, I suppose it, it just it just sends a message, doesn't it? Because these are the sort of fixtures that, you know, in years gone past, we've seen Leeds sort of like slip up when things have been like that close. Um, but it, th that doesn't seem to offend. This run is just, it just keeps on going. It's incredible. Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. And I think I've probably been saying it for weeks now on the podcast it's a freak season with how well Leicester, Ipswich, and and maybe not in so recent weeks Southampton, but then again Southampton do have a couple of games um, in hand now because of that one that was cancelled due to to the fire. Um, but yeah, it, it's a freak season. I think in any other season Leeds would have been home and dry pretty much by now. So um, so it, even though it's um it's amazing, it almost don't feel as amazing as it could be if you know what I mean. But um, but when you sit back and think it, it actually is and. Like Jerry touched upon there, like you look at our bench when you've got Piro, Dan James, uh, uh, Jaden Anthony, it's, you know, even Mateo Joseph is, is starting to, to come into his own, you know. I, I'm just sitting back and enjoying it because, you know, in, in, in recent seasons, we've had so many injury issues and we've had to have kids on the bench, literally kids. We've been calling them up from the 21s and oh, two goalkeepers on the bench and, and everything like that, so... You know what? Let's let's enjoy it. Like, if other teams want to sort of try and call us out for having these superstars at that level on on the bench, then let them do it. But you know, um, we know as Leeds fans, we, we've had so so many tough times with with squad depth and and whatnot. You know, um, so yeah, let's enjoy it. But I think overall, Leeds controlled the game really. Like like you said there, Jerry, there there are certain spell where Millwall had quite a bit of possession and we were just kind of oofing it clear at one point, you know, um, but they just didn't really have enough to, to unlock us, really. I think that's down to a couple of things. I think um, the quality of players we've got, you know, and, and how well the defence are doing at the moment, like we, we've touched upon. But also, how sort of drilled and organised we are. Um, Daniel Fark has done an amazing job and, you know, turning it round from a, you know, let's face it, a bit of a shit show um, at the beginning of the season when players were threatening to sue us and all that sort of stuff if they, yeah. if they couldn't leave and everything. And and now it just seems like one solid unit. And like you said there, Jerry, you know, players are happy. You know, Dan James is on the bench, but he's not complaining. He comes on for the last 30 minutes and gets a goal. So, you know, um, it's, it's fair play to him. that His attitude's in the right place. Even um, Jaden Anthony, he's, you know, he's on loan. He might be thinking, well, I'm a Premier League player technically I, I want to be playing week in week out you know he's not starting games but he's, he's getting cameos and you know he's contributing so yeah credit where credit's due to, to all the lot of them and you know potential little 
sticky game that. Um, we've not had a fantastic record, weirdly, against Millwall. Um, they're a little bit of a bogey team, more, more so away, I guess. But um, yeah, a comfortable win in the end. And uh, I guess 2 0 as well. And I don't often get the score yeah. predictions right. So um, and you yeah. and me both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dog always says 2 0. So he got it right. Uh, there you go. What about Rooter, though? He was, I thought he was having an average game. And then all of a sudden, he, he he's two assists for both goals. And uh, he was, yeah, once he gets in that byline, he's he's deadly dangerous. And one that hit the post off the keeper. I thought Dan James was never going to put that one away. I think Dan, mm-hmm. I think he, he had a look when did his shopping and come back and he goes, yeah, I'll put it there. And it just seemed like forever and did a good, did a good win or what. So that, that was the relief. But through, all through the team, I thought Archie was excellent again. I, I really do. And he should, I think the, the, the few kicks Millwall, but I think he'd give as good as he get. For, for a young lad, he, he can look after himself, but he's mm-hmm. such a talent, really is. Um, and I can only he praise it. We were saying on the, on the match reaction that it's, it's hard. You it, used to coming on here the last couple of years and criticizing and rants and everything, but whatever happens this season, as you say, he's done a fantastic job. We've got a great squad, a hell of a run, and we could still end up on 97, 98 points and not go up. But uh, I think um, the club has turned a corner here, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to be well, would it be nice to be back in the Premier League? I don't know. All, all the. the the, the crap that goes on up there. The championship is fun, actually, and uh, renewable acquaintance with Millwall. And you know, this I see the brought what six people they brought, you know, they didn't even sell the whole stand and they did their Millwall, whatever it is they do. And they're they're just boring, yeah, just uh, yeah, just East London, go back to your jelly deals and yeah, prepare for relegation. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me, uh, it reminded me it's like where you mentioned obviously all, all these players and like the uh, the bench being so good as well, and everybody's having a, a pretty good season. If you if you're gonna have to pick your player of the season right now, because obviously the player of the year awards will be coming up uh, at some point in May, I'm sure. Um, if you are going to have to pick, right, if you are going to have to pick your player of the season, wh- who would it be? I mean, young players, obviously, could, it's got to be Archie. Uh, so, uh, but is he also player of the year? Uh, I, I don't know. There's there's so many you could choose from. Well, it's certainly a, being for a shout with it, but you're right. There's so many you could choose from. Yeah. You know, um, Ampadu, what an amazing signing he's been. Joe Rodon, what an amazing loan signing he's been. You know, Ruta coming to his own this season, Somerville being instrumental. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, four players I've mentioned there. But then you you, you have players like Gruev, who's got into the team and doing a solid job, you know, sort of quietly doing a solid job, same as Glenn Kamara. So, yeah, it's it, it's going to be a really, really hard one to choose. Certainly young players got to be Archie, of course, but mm. he'd... Yeah. Um, it would also be in fresh out with yeah. the senior one as well. So, um, yeah, it's happy days. I think, I think we'll have to make up awards for them. I think Joe Rodon would certainly get the I've gone 15 rounds with a middleweight. Uh, <laughs> just look at my face award. And uh, Willie gets the redemption award, you know. What, yeah. What, uh, you know, uh, what what he's come back. Um, Archie's young player of the year. I mean, those players you mentioned, they all. And Dan James, again, a guy that was basically – loaned out to Fulham and not wanted and come back and uh he's he scored it was he's well into double figures uh, he seems to score every week grew have you know someone bulgarian of the year uh kamara <laughs> you know just just have come into midfield and bossed this yeah somerville just hit your free kicks harder award but yeah he scored 16 <laughs> goals and, uh, um <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> Patrick's done yeah. renaissance, man. You know, that penalty miss at Stoke, it was gone. On. And now he's nearly double figures and he just does what he does. And uh, mm. so the, the, uh, to get to this stage, you got to have everybody playing well and you can't really fault anybody. And and, and again, looking at this, the squad as a whole, there's tw- 20 players there who all got their hand up for, for a place in that team. Um, it's nice. But coming up Good Friday, we know what happens on Good Friday. We all remember Wigan from a few years ago. We got oh, we got a... Yeah, that still haunts me. That game. If I if I a top five bad days watching Leeds, that's in there definitely. So uh, we don't we don't want to do any sort of silly stuff on on uh, Good Friday. No crucifixions. No disappearing for three days. Yeah, <laughs> eating all your Easter eggs. Yeah, so, you know that your man. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, well, we told Jesus. You- Jesus rang the, the the restaurant last last week and he said, "Can I book me first supper with the lads?" 
And uh, yeah, I don't think he gets it, does he? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to hell, aren't I? I'm going to hell. <laughs> what do you mean last supper? Oh, not <laughs> Jesus, just, just uh, it's a supper. Anyway, that's Easter, give, never mind that. I'll give you one of these. There we go. That's for, for uh, the Jerry McNamee joke of the week. Uh, coming up soon, LS11's Jerry McNamee jokes of the week, a new podcast for all LS11 uh, listeners. Uh, it's, it's one of the many. We're, get, we're going to turn into like Gary Lineker at Goal Hanger. We're just going to do uh, lots of different random podcasts. Yeah. Uh, so. yeah. It'll work. It'll work. Uh, look, keep your comments coming. Anything else you guys want to say about the Millwall game apart from haha, and we move on? Yeah, we'll see um, you in a couple of years, lads. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly that. Really, <laughs> see you in a couple of years, and uh, thanks for the the win and uh, putting us at the top of the league. Yeah. yeah. Very nice indeed. Uh, loads of comments uh, coming in uh, this morning. Uh, Liam, very happy. Leeds are top of the league. Leeds are top of the league. Leeds is Leeds. Uh, I think he's a Leeds fan. Uh, Johnny Brown. Everyone knows of Johnny Brown. Morning, gents. Feelings are good about being top, but I do think there'll be a few more twists and turns yet. Yeah. Easter weekend will be massive as six of the top seven playing each other. Yet yeah, you are bang on right i think uh no no doubt it's going to be there is going to be twists and turns at that that's just football she's a cruel mistress yeah. uh, uh liam also says morning darren ryan and jerry top of the table come on mighty whites pa st patrick day happy st patrick's day for last sunday mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh also uh, nigel saying first time i've watched live on youtube what a handsome team there yeah. we go can't there disagree go. with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> bit, bit confused that Ben looks a little bit different and yeah. sounds different. But <laughs> looks, that looks that. more handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't look better. He uses products. I can't look better than Ben. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Jilly, I think that says, because it's upside down. So Pat and DJ vying for the Redemption Award. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's something we should do. We should do yeah. Alternative Player of the Year Awards. Mm. Uh, I quite like that idea. Quite like yeah. that idea. Coming soon on an LS11 feed. <laughs> Uh, very surely indeed um but look keep your comments coming in and we'll come back to those uh in a short wee while uh but right now ladies and gentlemen it's time to delve into the news <laughs> Boom! Indeed, yes. Any news, Graham, brought to you by our lovely friends Nikki at OLM Network Solutions. Do you know your VoIP from your Cat 5e? If you don't, well, maybe OLM Network Solutions is the place you need to go to. They're the one-stop shop for your telecom needs with over 20 years' experience in the industry. They can install fibre broadband into your business, various telecom services, installation, copper cabling. Find out more on their website, olmnetworksolutions.com. That's olmnetworksolutions.com. Hey, and I have some breaking uh, fibre news. Uh, I mean, I'm broadcasting from home again. Um, and uh, I can tell you, I've seen in the last few weeks, I've seen workmen up at the top of our crescent, not coming down our crescent. So I'm wondering if they're missing us. Uh, I think they're installing fiber. Uh, so uh, stand by your beds. My shocking Internet might be even better uh, soon. But I have only about four months ago signed up for a new broadband deal. So which I'm in for 18 months. So we, we, mm. I'm probably stuffed. I'm probably stuffed. <laughs> uh, OK. <laughs> Um, let's have a chat about the news. Hey, the final games of the season, whoa, Saturday the 4th of May, is going to be a party night for someone. Uh, but the final game, Southampton at Elland Road, now is kicking off at 12.30pm on Saturday the 4th of May. So is uh, so are they all the games all kicking off at the same... Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that is that in all the leagues as well? Yeah, it's, yeah. It it is in the twelve thirty. It it'll stagger it because uh, second and third division, third or whatever, third and fourth division, as I call them, old school. <laughs> uh, they they they'll probably kick off on the Saturday, or the, every every league's got its own uh, kickoff time. But can you imagine? The next day is a bank holiday as well, so uh, we could be. Uh, it's the first uh, May day, May day bank holiday. So oh, yeah. could be. Could be <laughs> 
a long day. Sometimes these end of season games, you look. I remember a few years ago, everybody was heading to Ipswich, you know, and then all of a sudden we we were out of it and it was a dead rubber. Uh, mm. It could be two teams going for the playoffs. You never know, but it could be a party day. But yeah, twelve thirty. That's uh, that's going to be some day if there's something riding on that game. Can you mm. imagine? Can you take it? It would be fantastic if a last minute goal sees us off, but I don't think I could take that. I want to be home and host by by Coventry on the sixth of April or something and just relax and enjoy it. But uh it'll be yeah, it's it, it's going to the wire this one, whatever way we're looking at it. But uh people are complaining, say, Oh, they've changed the time again, but everybody's kicking off the same time. Mm. I think yeah. the only the only three o'clock game I think we've got left is Coventry on on the sixth of April. I don't think that's been changed. But uh Yes, space and Middlesbrough the twentieth and oh yeah, Middlesbrough and QPR twenty twenty seven. But I expect them to be changed. I uh, expect every game it must be a record for live games on on uh, on, t- on TV. I mean, some of these actually suit. You know, twelve thirty on a Sunday sort of suits me. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the way you've obviously got all of these fixtures on a little wall planner that you're just gazing up. At. <laughs> yes, I do. It's all there. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a big maze. You know when you see in the crime series where they've got little yeah they've got <laughs> pictures and little yeah x's yeah sinister is a big x through him you know <laughs> uh, Le- lester's up there if he, if he could see it it's fantastic yeah brilliant uh, and there. also uh fourth of may of course not just um uh final day of the season but it's star wars day as well may the fourth be with you oh, who's going as chewy there we go that's what we're going to do get jerry to go ellen road as chewbacca <laughs> Yeah, be perfect. I normally do. Yeah, I haven't had a shave. <laughs> well, I go as ET because he was in Star Wars, wasn't he? No, we're, mo- we're moving on now. We're moving on, <laughs> Jerry. We're moving on. Still not uh, seen it. <laughs> I, it just, it just, just staggers me. Uh, staggers me. Uh, and I bought my tickets for Ghostbusters, uh, uh, which is on uh, in the cinemas tomorrow. Uh, I'm not being paid for this. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Go see it tomorrow. Uh, uh, you know the telephone tomorrow. number, don't you? Darren, is the is there going to be a Back to the Future Part Four coming no. out? Is that no. is that a hoax? Yeah, yeah that's that's bollocks. Yeah. With um, Tom Holland and and whatnot. I've seen like a trailer. That's yeah. <laughs> fan made. It's a fan made trailer. Yeah, don't really? don't do it. Don't it would ruin us. It would ruin us. Right. Yeah, yeah. If I, you've I, ever, I, yeah. If you've ever seen the guy, what's the bully called? Um, can't think of his name. The bully that's in it, and he's he's on the circuit. And he does it. What's his name? Biff. 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 Yeah, and he does a song. Just look up Biff singing his song about. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's absolutely brilliant. Will there be another one? No, he says. Well, why would you? <laughs> you I mean, uh, you would have to, have Michael. You'd have to have the same actor as Michael J. Fox, and you know he's. He struggles, struggling a bit at the moment, but just leave it. It's perfect as it is. Exactly, it's yeah. a perfect trilogy. You don't and need I've to seen be. That. I've that. seen that ten times. With See Tom there you go. Yeah, so it's a great movie. Uh, uh, yeah, so no, uh, I think it's a fan made trailer. I think it's a fan made trailer. It looks um, pretty professional. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they do. Some of them are incredible. What what the, the I mean, just kids that do them. But Jesus Christ, they're they're amazing. Yeah. I just, uh, 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 so yeah, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire out tomorrow. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, some injury news: Ruta is out for ten days. He had a little hernia problem um, for a few weeks, apparently, uh, and he's undergone minor surgery now uh, because I saw a photo of him on social media yeah. doing the obligatory <laughs> from the hospital bed. Um, that was a thumbs up for our audio uh, listeners. Um, uh, but uh, apparently, Rye's going to be out for about ten days. Yeah, so that's what the the club are saying. Um, hopefully, it is obviously like we were just speaking about instrumental players. He, he's certainly being one of them. But it, it's weird. It's like I think Jerry touched upon it in the Millwall game. The, I must admit, over the last sort of few games or so, I don't think he's been the best rutter that we've seen in in this season. But he's still got two assists and still played a, an integral part to to win the game. So you know, even when he's not on form, he's still integral so yeah we, we need him and hopefully yeah uh, uh, like that post with the thumbs up apparently everything went well so um fingers crossed um he can get himself uh back ready within that 10 day period that, that the sort of saying and um you know get him back as soon as we can yeah yeah so. it's uh, he's, he's sort of a 
he's obviously been nursing that through, and uh, I think that they obviously they've managed it to get get to this point where he'd have the ten days. Um, although strike was only going to be out for ten days, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you always you always worry when you see some. But uh, if I if I had a, if any of us had a hernia operation, I think I'd be I'd be uh, sitting in the chair for months. Yeah, oh, be yeah. Moving, so, be taking yeah. a year off work. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, so it's. Uh, He'll he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll just he'll just be doing what Rutter. He's just isn't it so much fun? Just what you did watching him. Just the joy, the joy every time. And he, he's lo- he's loving it. And he, he gets it, doesn't he? He really gets yeah. it. And uh, yeah, if you're having a, a, a poorish game, but you can still do two assists and be the top assister in the country, I think he's not, he's not far off in all four divisions. It's uh, it's not not a bad return. Uh, I've got some other news that I spotted uh, this morning as well, uh, which is uh, former Leeds United coach and uh, uh, is stepped in ably as well, uh, which is Mark Jackson, who is currently down under, mate, uh, with uh, Central Coast Mariners. Uh, once again, coach of the month. Uh, and that's like uh, three times, third consecutive time now. Uh, for the A League uh, Coach of the Month for for Jacko, so uh, congratulations! Uh, well done to him. Also, yeah. a mention for uh, Scoobs uh, or, or Scabara. He's absolutely yeah. flying at Lincoln. I think they've won last three games six, five, and four, including that one of the six was against Gary Monk's Cambridge. But he's got Lincoln to the edge of the playoffs, and uh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on them. But they're not only winning games; they're absolutely hammering teams. So uh, good on him, and he was he. He did. He stepped up when we needed him for those few games, um, and uh, good luck to him. Yeah, it's always nice seeing seeing other managers do well, except Neil Warnock. And Jesse <laughs> Marsh. Where's Jesse going to turn up this week? What's he going to be talking about? Oh, yeah. oh, I saw. Apparently, he's been touted as a new coach in Belgium. I think yeah. it, is it Club Bruges? I, I'm not sure if it's Club Bruges or not. Uh, but there was there's definitely a, a Belgium team sniffing around Marsh. Yeah. So yeah, good luck. Yeah, to this, them. yeah he needs to fail because he's talking bollocks. Really, he just talks. <laughs> he talks. Uh, yeah, if, if this had gone right and that had gone right, I'd be the greatest manager in the world. Just send Colin Farrell over to Bruges and sort him out if he goes there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe he lose in Bruges. That's not the name of the movie, but yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. something like that. Uh, I can't remember. It's, it's a Belgium team, anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, and the under twenty ones lost to uh, Fulham by five goals to three. Uh, does leave Leeds at the bottom of the table, which is disappointing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I obviously Ben's our, our expert. I, I don't manage yeah. to catch much of it, but I sort of see a little bit some bats, and it, there seems to be a bit, quite a big transition going on um, there. And and it's not it's not a bad thing, is it? It's a you know obviously the want to be in the league they're in at the moment. So it's more competitive. Like last season, was we was smashing teams really. So you want to be in the the, the league that we're currently in, but. Um, yeah, there's quite a big transition going on. You know, as players moved up into the senior squad, the other players that have not really cut cut it for the seniors, and they're kind of getting too old to be in Leeds under 21s. And um, we've we've sold them or, or loaned them out. So yeah, there's a big transition period going on. So it's kind of nothing to be worried about, I guess. But um, it's um, it's all about development, and as we've seen over the years, we we, we we're quite good at that. So um, yeah, o- hopefully we can pick up a, enough points to maybe get out of that well not get relegated mm. but uh yeah it's certainly a, a competitive league is is that one we, we got promoted into this season yeah if we, if we're, yeah sorry if we're producing to if, if out of the youngsters we produce one or two players that i think most clubs accept that we've got joseph mm. we've got gellard we've got other players and look at the youth team in the semi-final as well which mm. is uh that's that's uh very prestigious and a lot of teams have gone on for I me mean, we won it in the 90s and uh yeah, there's the class in '92. Apparently, did so. I don't know who they were, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of teams. Youth Cup uh, is yeah, that's that's the sign that you're doing things right. So yeah, the, the under twenty ones and as as ben, as ben says, as Ryan says, <laughs> is uh, is it's yeah, it's changing it's changing in the guard really, and uh, yeah, we still we still got talent. There's some great young players coming through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, that that is it for news. Um, so, but if you are a roving Leeds reporter and you spot some news, uh, then you can always uh, get in contact with us at LS11 LUFC. Right now, though, it's time to enter the Router Files. 
这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，这是一样，Yeah, the Rooter Files this week brought to you by our very own Jerry Mac. Have you got land and property issues? Have you got questions about making a bit of cash out of a villa land at the back of your garden? Well, there's one man who can help, and that is Jerry McNamee at McNamee Consultants Limited. He is the boy when it comes to finding out anything about land and property. He's the expert, of course. Plus, does some rather bad jokes on Twitter. Find out more McNamee Consultants Limited dot com. We cross live to Jerry McNamee to find out the latest on land and property. It's still not making any new land, but just as well this week because I've not done much. I've just been <laughs> recovering, but uh, and, uh, yeah, it's it's all right. It's it's all right. A, this is okay. Yeah, it keeps, exactly. keeps me going, helps me with my charity work and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> you, know you, you want to take your business to to Holland? They just reclaim land from the sea, don't they, over there? Do so they? Actually, oh, we'll try that. Yeah. So they actually do make new land. <laughs> yeah, and there's no there's no hills over there or, or yeah. steep inclines or anything else. Flat. Yeah. Very flat. Yeah, it is very flat. It's. Uh, <laughs> As flat places go, it is one of the flattest. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. That's my expert view in the Dutchland. Jerry, so, as you're so. our super sub this week, you get to go first uh, with your uh, Rutafile nomination. Well, I, I've got one, but I have a feeling one of you might have that, so I'll, I'll leave it out. But uh, yeah, there's there's a few as I was. I was going to stick Cooper from Millwall in. Absolute thug. Shouldn't have been on the pitch. Three, three cards. I think the maddest thing this weekend was the FA Cup. Uh, absolute three out of the four games, last minute wins. Coventry against Wolves, that was brilliant. Even even the even Scumchester beating Liverpool was funny in a way because uh, Klopp doesn't get you know his, his long goodbye at the FA Cup. And uh, the other one, uh, Chelsea, the Chelsea uh, Leicester game, which is his own comedy moment. Did you see that OG where the guy plays it back to the keeper and he plays it straight into the net? So and uh, Raheem Sterling and his mad free kicks. Uh, so the FA Cup, Sky TV, of course, for costing me a, a trip to to um, Elland Road. Uh, and um, just to mention again, Ireland won the Six Nations and uh, keep keep winning the rugby. It's getting a bit boring now. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll just we'll we'll just take it and we, when we move on. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, and and just Leeds Leeds in there has just been mad what we're doing at the minute. Just mad. Yeah, it is mad. Did you see Klopp did uh, after the yeah. uh, match? He had a uh, he told what I think it was like a a, a European uh, yeah. broadcast. He, didn't he call him fat or something like that? Uh, Casted aspersions about his physique yeah. before walking off from the interview. And you're like, oh, good he loser. Look in the mirror. He must have a look in the mirror. He looks like a mad fecker, doesn't he? Put your glasses <laughs> back on. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you look less mad. So he is, they're not real. Man, he is real. a big man. There's no doubt about that. He's very tall. Yeah, very tall. Um, okay, Rye, what what are you chucking him? Um, I'm actually putting in Nottingham Forest for being dumped into the relegation zone after they've got a point deduction for not uh, complying with the uh, PSR r- rules and regulations. Um, yeah. I must admit, kind of goes a bit of my head at the moment because it's just insane. I know we spoke about mm. it previous times. So I think Everton was probably in in the root of files once upon a time earlier on for, for for the same thing. But the funny thing is, well, not funny, but the thing is, Forrest got deducted four points. So Everton and Everton fans are going, hang on, they've spent more money than us. They've they've breached it with more money or whatever. Why have they got a less of less of a sentence? But apparently there is like other things going on, and again, I'm not that bothered to start reading the ins and outs of it. But yeah, I just <laughs> sit back and watch the fireworks, and it, it's quite funny. But you know, still talk of Leicester could still possibly get into a bit of trouble, and various other teams. And I just don't know where where it's going to end because you know Forest and Everton have been reprimanded already. But I think there's teams like Liverpool, Manchester City, I think Man United as well as one of them. Basically, most of the Premier League. Certainly, top six have absolutely been horrendous. So, do they get relegated into 
the second Not league or something. I don't know. Mm. You know, so it's just I, I just don't know where it's going to end. But um, yeah, so I, f- I found it quite funny just um, sitting back and watching the fireworks with that one. But um, but you boys have probably seen this. I guess everybody has. Um, it's shocking scenes, really. That tra- Tradzon Spore uh, in Turkey. Um, a lot of their fans stormed the pitch to try and attack Fenerbahce players. Like, Ooh, no, I haven't uh, seen it. Yeah, I've seen Aren't you? Yeah. Uh, but, but Fenerbahce players were like, bring it on. And there were like judo flying kicks and all sorts of stuff going yeah. on. And um, there were a couple of players for Fenerbahce that were getting right stuck in, you know, absolutely kicking a lot of these lads and defending themselves. But like, doing martial arts skills it were insane to see i mean <laughs> so th- that turkish league's nuts absolutely nuts you know when, when they say that you don't want to see this sort of thing on on tv on the football yeah. pitch you bloody do it's brilliant you want you want a good rook in the middle yeah. Yeah. although it was serious stuff you're right it was but the uh like i said the fenerbahce players were really defending themselves and um i i probably said fenerbahce players came out on top in the end it was, um, wow insane scenes and, and they need to get a grip like it, it happens a lot over there incidents like that and um apparently incidents in the car parks and all sorts afterwards you know yeah. and, and stuff getting attacked it's um it's, it's not acceptable really so um yeah and, um, <clears throat> Wow. Okay. Uh, that's a, that's a crap. I'm going to have to have a look for that now. I'm going to have to have a look. For that. uh, that's uh, that's incredible. Um, okay. I've got a couple. Um, so uh, the first one. Uh, this will give you a clue. Okay. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. The weekend comes. Who knew the Fox <laughs> was a Leeds fan? Who knew? I didn't know this. Yeah. I would have jumped on this years ago if I'd have known this. Uh, I mean, and he's not jumped the shark. No, uh, Henry Winkler uh, tweeted, uh, in honour of our, of our daughter-in-law, we celebrate at LUFC being top of the table. Hashtag MOT. Mm-hmm. Is, he watching? Is he watching, do you think? Oh, the phones. Phones. Hey. Yeah, hey. the phones. He, yeah. he, he, he uh, tweeted we're on a tour soon. Mm. What's that? Sorry, he's coming on a tour. He's got a book out, and he's doing a tour with it. And he's yeah, at I'm York right. Barbican in like uh, I think it. I think it's like June. I think. Get, get like him that. on. Get him on. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what we should do. Yeah. He, he tweeted a picture, didn't he, of himself about you know, when Bielsa in charge? I think about yeah. like, three yeah. years or so ago, he did, yeah. and he was sat like in an armchair with a big lead scarf on. What wasn't he? Like, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. is, this is unbelievable. Or, or have I forgotten and we've done this one before? But uh, <laughs> still, I can play the Happy Days theme tune, so I'm yeah. happy. Uh, so that's all good. Um, I've got to say an honourable mention as well to uh, Johnny Brown. Everyone loves a Johnny Brown and everyone knows a Johnny Brown, uh, who messaged me saying uh, because he was at the game and he saw Ross McCormack and Ben Parker. Ben Parker sporting a St. Patrick's Day hat, I think, uh, uh, on that particular day. This is on the Millwall game. He says, can you please pop a little mention to the uh, that uh, this little legend on the route of ours? My youngest, Alfie, has been to 36 games live and has never seen them lose. Right. Alfie's not that. allowed yeah. to never not go to a game again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, Agent Alfie is uh, how he is known. But, yeah, yeah, he's been to 36 games and never seen them lose. What mm. the? What the? It can, it can go both ways because I remember a few years ago when I didn't get to go to Elland Road regular, I went two years without seeing them win live. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, that but that that could have easily been done in the in the uh, ten years ago. But yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen uh, Johnny's lad on there lots of times. So uh, keep coming, just keep yeah. coming. The, the, the start the, the start of my Leeds being a Leeds fan was um, a bit similar to Alfie's in a way. Um, my very first game was the ninety one ninety two season. I, I remember the very first game we, we beat Nottingham Forest one nil. Ellen Road, Gary McAllister scored, and I'm like. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Like we won, and First game of the season, and yeah. I didn't have a season ticket at the time. I kind of shared it with my cousin, so I kind of going on and off, and didn't see him lose. We won the league, and I like that's well, quite good supporting Leeds United. This, and then um, <laughs> then it went downhill from there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My first season watching Leeds United, we we won the league, and um, yeah, we're amazing. But 
Yeah. Well, I, I, when I started sporting, we got to the cup final every year, and uh, right. we've not been since, and I was nine then. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there's one more to pop in if you're done, Darren, which uh, I'll, I don't know if you have any more. I've got, I've one, got more. one more. I've got well, one more. you go. I, I think you might have the same. You go for it. You go for it. Well, I'm chucking England in uh, oh. uh, because uh, they've announced this week uh, the uh, the kits you can buy for the England uh, Euro 2024 uh, match kits. Um, and, uh, well, you can buy it. And uh, the men's Nike ADV football authentic shirt, just a shirt, £124.99. pence. How can you justify 125 quid for a shirt? Uh, I'm sorry. I will just pick the one out that I bought 15 years ago and wear that. Thank you very much. Uh, you can get an Ireland kit for 60 yeah, sponsored by Sky. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. With Sammy Schmuddox wearing it. Sammy Schmuddox. Sammy Schmuddox is in our squad. Yeah. 125 oh, quid. That's, that's mad. Well, I that's disgraceful. Quid, Eve, I mean, that's like the, the match, match, proper match one. Apparently, there's a different one called a stadium one, which is exactly the same, but not the one that like Harry Kane will wear. And that's eighty-five quid. Oh well, you know that's a, oh that's a that's a bargain. That's a bargain. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Or alternatively, go to um, certain Chinese websites and you'll get it for about a tenner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is ripping yeah, off. The the, the the logo might be a bit wonky, and England's <laughs> probably spelt with an like an R in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, like it but, um, yeah, but other than that, it's uh, <laughs> same, 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 a lot more. <laughs> All Timu, aren't we? The um, one I was going to mention was, of course, Luke Ayling. Luke Ayling yes, was back at Ellen yes, Road. Yeah, how, how yes. have we had that? <laughs> Luke I, Ayling was, I, thought, I thought you'd have that. I mean, yeah. he was, I saw him in the, in the crowd in the match, but uh, he went into the Peacock or the Luke, Luke Ayling and then um, was mobbed. And I don't know if it's true, but it seems to be widely reported that he left five grand behind the bar. It was 500 um, quid. It what was, was it, 500? That yeah, sounds a bit the, more um, reasonable. Five grand sounds a bit mad. Yeah, but the, still, uh, still, the Peacock, twi the twi Peacock put it on social media and yeah, they had a picture still, of him and he was putting 500, well, not cash, but on his card. Yeah, That's still uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the adulation, and it just shows you, um, you know, players come and go and we've, we've ledged, but, you know, there's, cult heroes and everything we could we could name loads of them and he's definitely up there in the top 50 cult leads player maybe top 20 you know what he what he done how he was and um yeah if, if we do if we do come across him again playing if he doesn't do an alien flop even against us i'll be really annoyed that just <laughs> the game never started till he did an alien flop and just his humor and just again another guy who got it and uh great to, many players can come back like that um, and just get that adulation. You know, I don't think Sinister is coming back anytime soon and, and getting mobbed, is he? Um, and players like that. But now, fair he may, play, get, he may get mobbed, but in a different way. He may get mobbed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not going to yeah, be rebranding the Peacock for Lewis Sinister. <laughs> yeah, it's good It's good seeing that. Uh, and players like Ross McCormick. There, there's a guy who's uh, been rejuvenated and uh, he's he's been seeing a lot of games. And it's, it's good to see uh, ex players around. Um, uh, I saw one a few weeks ago, Neil Collins. Now he, he, he was our centre half in the third division when we were mm -hmm. there, and um, I saw him and I, I said, "Oh, you're Neil Collins. How are you doing?" And he was—he seemed genuinely pleased that someone had remembered him and recognised him. He's a manager at Barnsley now, so uh, yeah, we see a lot of ex-players around. They're always always decent lads. So uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's see yeah. Although I did meet Gary Lineker once. He was a bit miserable. Met him on a right. train once. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. at that. A bit miserable. Maybe a calm on a bad day. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Everyone is a bad day. I met day. Declan Rice once. No, I didn't. But if I ever do, <laughs> <laughs> let it go, Jerry. I'll let tell it. him. I'll tell him. Yeah. You've got Ben White. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. What's going on with Ben White? What's going on with Ben White? He could. Could he still play for Ireland? I think that's I what he wants know. to do. I don't I don't know. Know. What, what is going on with Ben White? I've, I've seen. I saw some yesterday, but I didn't properly read it. Well, the room, I've heard that he, he fell out with the assistant manager, Steve Holland, and yeah. he apparently he's one of these players that doesn't like football. I'm saying he's mm. a bit bored by it, but you know, it doesn't matter. If 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 you play for Ireland, England, um, Moldova, San Marino, you you wanna you wanna play for your it's a short career. You kinda yeah. wanna just wear 
wear your, your you'd wear it if somebody called you up for the tiddly winks if you're wearing that shirt um you know and I'm, I'm, I'm available for the irish tiddly winks team if anybody's <laughs> watching um but yeah it's just it's just a strange one why why there's something going on there we don't know but um yeah. i think i think he's He's just over tanned, I think. I think that's just... <laughs> yeah. maybe there's a new policy that's come in that they that players now have to buy their own shirts and they just think I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up, you know, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Uh, there's another podcast. We could have tanning tanning players who don't play for the country podcast. <laughs> Actually, t- talking of other podcasts, I was, this is another podcast recommendation. This is really good. It's Dara O'Brien and uh Josh Winnicom. Widdicom, yeah, uh, and it's called the Fifty Three, yeah, uh, and it's all about the Fifty Three minutes, uh, and it's Ali Dia, Ali Dyer, yeah. but it's Ali, actually Ali Ali. Char, yeah. um, the how it's pronounced. The guy that played really only Fifty Three minutes of Premier League football and was yeah. supposed to be George Weyer's cousin. But, oh, that uh, one, yeah, yeah. we're like, down at Portsmouth for it, Southampton, Southampton, yeah. that's it, yeah. yeah. It's a, and it's a podcast. The first episode, I was listening to it yesterday. It's brilliant. Uh, it's really good. Uh, so w- well worth delving into if you if you like your sort of like football myths. I'm uh, sure you. I'm sure they could do a whole ream of podcasts about players we had like that in the in the 2010 to 20, 2018. Edgar Chani comes to mind. I don't know why. Anybody ever remember Edgar Chani? Oh, oh Jesus, yeah. The worst player I've ever seen. I'm not saying something about the players and we had a player called sloth and he was and the biscuit wrist goal kick. oh we couldn't add there's a whole podcast let's do a podcast on bad yeah. lead players yeah uh, add that to the list ls11's yeah. worst ever players that's coming very shortly uh in your ls11 feet uh, so uh check it out uh check it out jerry we'll let you choose who's the uh winner of this week's uh router files i think it's luke Ailey. just yeah yeah, mm, I think it's a yeah. game. It's, it's, it's a given. Yeah, and Ireland it's... winning the Six Nations are close. close <laughs> uh, if you've got a nomination, then just delve into our uh, Twitter feed at LS11LUFC. This is LS11. Mortgages might seem a bit of a minefield yeah. at the moment, but it doesn't actually need to be that complicated. Get in contact with LS11 sponsor Mortgages with Hanny & Co for clarity on the mortgage market. They're one of the UK's fastest growing brokerages, supporting requirements of individuals and businesses with a team of dedicated experts. They'll guide you through every single step. Take the first step towards your future today. Visit Mortgages with Hanny & Co right now and quote LS11 for £100 off their one-off broker fee mortgages with hanny and co on the journey with you yeah thanks very much to uh hanny and uh well i suppose do, do we preview the good friday one now or is that which mm. we did just leave that for next week i don't know what probably, do we do do probably leave it for next week yeah. um i guess I mean, I we'll talk about next week it's going yeah. to be the long good friday isn't it because all the games are on one after the other starting at leicester 12 30 right yeah. through to us at eight o'clock Oh, yeah, well, I, I hear the, they might have a new manager in place. I hear Kate Middleton's been seen in Watford, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's around. Um, yeah, you yeah, can tell yeah. by the sleeves. It wasn't her. It is. Uh, it wasn't you can her. tell. No, you can tell. No, it, it was definitely Photoshop. But uh, yeah, we, that that is a big weekend coming up. That's yeah, it. my no, birthday I'm... weekend. If we we play home on the first of April, which is my big birthday, so oh, it could geez. be could be a big celebration that weekend. I tell you, you're looking great for 70 as well. I so know, you know, you know. I, feel, I feel 80, but uh, there you go. It's uh, <laughs> 60, 60 for the record, just in case. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the 65 Cup final. I remember the 72, <laughs> but uh, yeah, with certain vintage. Yeah, I, I like bank holiday football, uh, and I'm going to be at Bradford City on uh, Good Friday, but I'm yeah. stealing myself for a for a for, for more. Well, they're not going well. They lost five yeah. one, didn't they? Though? In fact, I've had a go, uh, one of my students has just started doing placement there in the last few games, and yeah. since he's joined there, uh, they've lost three on the bounce at home and shipped ten goals and only scored one. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not putting the the blame firmly at his door, but pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, uh, it's been a bit of a baptism of fire for the young student who's been there uh, recently. Yes, yeah, not 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 going too crash hot at the moment not yeah. going to but if we're going to preview a game tonight uh wales v finland 
Uh, oh. Lots of oh, Leeds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the Leeds derby. We got Kamara playing for uh, Finland, and most of the Welsh team are Leeds players for the <laughs> playoff for the semi-final <laughs> playoff for the Euros. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have, and uh, so we'll be watching. That, going, no, don't 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 yeah. win that tackle. Yeah. Stop, don't. But I uh, hope hope Wales win. Be, these over nice. two legs. Are these over no, two? I legs? think this is a one-off, and I think they go into a final. I used to know this when Ireland used to get to the playoffs, but yeah, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> we got Belgium this weekend. Yeah, Belgium. Mm. So uh, our new manager, John O'Shea, uh, uh, well, our new interim manager, because Lee Carsley doesn't want us anymore. He's not coming. So uh, we're linked to loads. But John O'Shea could be our manager. Let's see how he gets on. Mm. Yeah, 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 you know that. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got a big double. I think England play Brazil, and Brazil are shit at the moment. <laughs> they really are poor. They are the poorest. I, That's what you hear often, yeah, is it? Yeah, that guy, Tim, uh, the, the South American reporter you hear in Talk Sport, um, he's saying the worst Brazilian team. Yeah, the, the worst Brazilian team ever. The sixth in the qualifying group and uh, they've got no direction. So um, if you if you beat Brazil this weekend, England, you're not going to... It doesn't mean anything. I'm just I'm just saying, make sure you're all right about that. Uh, but yeah, it's just... You, International. It's a boring week, isn't it, without football? I was watching the big match from 1978 last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the football is dreadful. And, uh, but you, you, you look at the players and go, how many of these are still alive? It's, it's uh, sad to see. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Watch the big match. It's brilliant. If, you, if you're from that era. It is, I, it is I, good. I discovered, just visit it with time. I discovered the first match I ever went to as a Leeds, Leeds fan the other day. Arsenal at Highbury. Uh, 1977, and it was on there, and I thought, "Wow, I was only young." Never mind. Oh, it's the wee pup. Uh, loads of uh, comments coming in. David says, that, "Yeah, I've seen the Fonz with a lead shirt and a scarf a couple of years ago." Oh, I must have missed this completely. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so Gavin is saying worth watching the under 18s versus Liverpool on YouTube. Harry looks some player. Um, uh, Tim saying, Jerry, I was born in 62 for the age of four. We kicked a ball in a white shirt, nothing else. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Richard uh, Delvin in saying, John Kevin Augustine, uh, worked out to be the most expensive player of all time, technically, played 46 minutes and coasted. There you go, yeah. that's the name of the podcast, LS11 46 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So we're, we're sorted. Um, 46, 46 minutes and 18 million quid later or whatever it was. Yeah, He was, yeah, he was yeah, good yeah. on a running machine, I seem to remember. That was about it. <laughs> so he, he, was, he was dreadful. Well, he, he, I know he was dreadful, but yeah, the worst, worst, that is the worst value we've ever had mm -hmm. of any player. Uh, and updating on the Nottingham Forest thing, Michael's uh, sort of like disseminated it for us here. Nottingham Forest were due to be deducted six points, but as they cooperated mm -hmm. with the powers that be, they were only deducted four. Grass. Uh, <laughs> Forest appeal and lose, that extra two points will be added onto the four points. Mm -hmm. And uh, Everton apparently are also cooperating, are likely to get a four point deduction instead of six points if providing they don't appeal. The problem is, I think, is the appeals. It's going to end up, there's going to be mm. asterisks at the end of the season because uh, the appeals will be heard after the end of the season. So no one, that on the final day of the season, you will not know, I don't think, no. whether your team is relegated or not. It's wow. the kind of duty, isn't it? Cooperating, cooperating with the tape, you know? And mm. I think the big the big crime syndicates of the top four, they're getting away with it. They can't pin mm. it on them. How can how can you not have points docked at this stage for 115 different uh um, breaches, which I think twenty to follow. It's still not being heard as well. It's it's, it's it is a closed shop. It's it's making it harder for teams coming up rather than yeah. protecting. And you look at Newcastle. I mean, we're not got much simply New Newcastle are, are probably the richest club in Britain, UK, probably the world. And they can't oh, yeah. spend it. They can't spend anything because no. of this. And it's it's a, it's a closed shop, and it's it's not fit for purpose. And uh, we we could be affected by it if we go up. I think previous years were taken into consideration and all sorts of complications so it, ne it needs to be changed because we still if you look at reading and you look at uh, other teams like that fit and proper owners who's who's doing that we've had our share of that <laughs> so it, it's it's not fit for purpose and it needs to be sorted and just check into whoever's buying a club look at berry look at all these teams that have disappeared uh torquay they're going down the pan we got there's got to be a better system and not just counting the money in the Premier League. 
You know, so. But it's funny though watching it. <laughs> Michael's got more information for us as well. If yeah. Wales beat Finland tonight, they'll either play Poland or Estonia in the playoff final Tuesday, the twenty sixth of March. That's in Cardiff. Yeah. Three days before Ooh. Leeds play away to Watford on Good Friday. So uh could be a massive week for Wales. Uh yeah. so uh yeah, good luck to uh Ampadu Road on uh Daniel James. Mm. Uh, may, may, good luck, maybe not. I'd rather him lose and have him fit up 400% <laughs> yes, for Watford. I just thought that. Yeah, I, yeah I don't, if, if they're playing three days before they have to mm. put a lead shirt on, they're going to be yeah. tired and bruised yeah. or whatever. So yeah. um, maybe, maybe, sorry, Wales, maybe, <laughs> yes. they'll, maybe they'll lose tonight. And then, I thought uh, that, yeah. Then, it's not, uh, yeah. As a Leeds fan, uh, I want my players fit yeah. and uh, rested. <laughs> Come on, Glenn Kamara. Come on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's it for LS11 for another week. Thanks very much for all your comments. Loads of them coming in this morning. Uh, really, really appreciate it every single week, of course. Make sure you like, subscribe, give us a five-star Apple podcast review. Delve into at LS11 LUFC as well. Uh, and, of course, you can get uh, early access uh, to uh, Opposition View and, of course, the match reactions if you subscribe via patreon.com forward slash LS11. Big thanks to our sponsors of this week's episode, OLM Network. Network Solutions, Jerry McNamee Consultants, and uh, Mortgages with Hanny and Co. And of course, the main sponsor of LS11, Tough Shop. Uh, so big thanks to them, uh, Jerry. Thanks very much for stepping yeah. in once again, no Ryan. Problem. It's always lovely to see you. Yeah, uh, of course. likewise. Thanks very much, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you again uh, next week. Tata, have a lovely weekend. This is. LS11.